we will walk through an example of hypothesis testing here. Let's consider a taxi entrepreneur. He has several cars and he rents them out to taxi drivers. What he is concerned about is the hourly earnings of his taxi drivers. In fact, he's concerned about them because he thinks that if they are too low, then his taxi drivers will go somewhere else and perhaps rent cars where they're a little cheaper. And if they are too high, he thinks he should really charging them more. In fact, he thinks the average hourly earnings or the expected value should be around 20 pounds. That is the sweet spot for him. But he's concerned of them to be the earnings to be too high or too low on average. So his alternative hypothesis is that these average earnings are unequal to 20, either too high or too low. Now his experience, he's a very old hack in the business uh, and he's taken some statistics and he analyzed data over the uh, many years. He knows that these earnings are actually normally distributed. But what he's not sure about is that average earning mu, the expected value. He also is not quite sure about the variance. So he thinks, oh, I need to estimate that variance from the sample. Okay, that needs to be approximated from the sample. Uh, S squared is the sample variance. All right, so here is the settings of a hypothesis test. He knows he, I can take a sample of 25 observations. He will ask uh, on a particular day, 25 drivers, what their earnings in the third hour were, say. He wants to undertake a hypothesis test with a 10% significance level. And from that sample, he will get a value for Q bar and a value for S, the sample standard deviation or the sample variance. Let's already put down what that sample standard deviation is. That Let's say that was four. Okay. So, as this is a statistically trained taxi entrepreneur, he knows that if he has to estimate the variance sigma squared and use a sample approximation, we're dealing in a world where we are thinking about a t-statistic where the sample mean, so that's the big Q bar, that's the random variable, minus the expected value divided by the standard error of this test statistic, which is going to be S squared divided by square root of N. No, sorry, it's not going to be S squared. Be careful, it's either s divided by the square root of n or the square root of s squared over n. So let's write it like this. Here we go. He knows that this test statistic is t distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So it's t distributed because we know that q is normally distributed, but we don't know the variance in the population, so we have to approximate it. And our sample size is fairly small, so we're not quite sure that we're close enough at the normal distribution. So, here we go. This is the setup of the test statistic. Let's think about decision rules. And we'll write down three decision rules, although you know that in practice you'll only have to use one, because if you do it correctly, um, you will get it right with either of the three decision rules, but we will write down all three of them. The first one, the easiest to write down is reject H0 if the p-value is smaller than alpha, the significance level. Then we will be able to write a decision rule with respect to the t-statistic, re reject H0 if something of t and then we will be able to write it down in terms of the sample mean we check h naught if something is the case with q bar which is going to be the sample mean so let's first think a little bit graphically about this what we so i'm gonna 
think about two graphical representations. One in terms of our t statistic, which is a t distribution that look fairly similar to a normal distribution. And then one with respect to our sample mean. And that is q bar. Now q bar will be a normal distribution because q is a normal distribution. t is going to be a t distribution. So that is hypothesized to be a t distribution. t distribution is around zero. q bar, that is the hypothesized distribution assuming that the population mean is 20. That will be centered around 20. So now, what type of values would make us reject the null hypothesis? Since we have a two-tailed test statistic, um, alternative hypothesis, sorry, a two-tailed alternative hypothesis, we will reject the null hypothesis for extreme values on either side. So that means graphically we are looking for values that are sort of extreme on either side. And now what values are we looking at? Well, this is now driven by the significance level. Significance level is 10%. Since we're having a two-tailed alternative, we are looking for the values of the T statistic, which cut off 5% of the distribution of the probability in each tail. And equally for Q bar. But we'll start with this. So what are these values here that cut off 5%? To figure that out, we need to go to the T distribution. I just happen to have a T distribution table here. So here we have a T distribution table and there's a number of things you need to recognize. This table is structured in a different way to a standard normal table. Let me use red here. Remember we were looking for the probability, let me sketch a t distribution here. We are looking for a probability that a value in a t distribution cuts off 5%. That's what we are looking for. So we'll get back to this in a moment. First, we need to understand what values we find in a t-table. So recall that we are thinking of a t-distribution with 10, 24 degrees of freedom. This coefficient here, k, that represents the degrees of freedom. So we are only interested in the values down here because that is our distribution. So each row here represents values from one distribution but different rows are different distributions. So you first need to identify the row you're interested in. Then the value what you find in the table is, it says here, but let me say it a little bit bigger, TK, so in our case, the K is gonna be 24, is small or equal than a certain value C is equal to P. Now let's pick that first value here p or 0.75. So if we have 0.75 and t24 small or equal to a certain value c. Now what is that value c here? That is this value 0.685. So what that is, remember, the t distribution is centered around 0, 0 0.685 is somewhere here, 0 0.685. So what that information tells us is that this area here, up to here, this area here has a size of 75%, 0 0.75. That's what this value tells us. So note that this table is structured differently to a normal distribution because here we can see the probabilities at the edge of the table, basically here in the top row, and then what we see in the middle of the table is that 
sort of t-value, that is from the t-distribution. Whereas in the normal distribution, it was the other way around. We had the probabilities in the middle of the table and the set values on the outside. So we need to know how to read this table. So now remember, we are looking for that red value here, where the t-value cuts off 5%. Now, we are given probabilities of the small or equal type. So basically what we are after is the value that cuts off 95%. So that red area here should be 95%. Remember, probabilities here on the top, 95 is here. 24, that's our degrees of freedom. So what we find here is 1.711. So that value is 1.711. So with that, we can go back to our problem. We know that this value here is 1.711 because we are talking about a t-distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. And since the t-distribution as the normal distribution is symmetrically distributed, this will be negative 1.711. So that means we now know what our rejection rule is. Reject H0 if t is either smaller than negative 1.711 or t is larger than 1.711. So we basically identified that we will reject if we end up to the right of this line or to the left of this line. And then how does that translate into values for the random variable q bar? Let me use a different color here. So we know this value 1.711, 1.711, that is a t value that corresponds to this cutoff point. How do we translate that? Well, we use our basically translation formula here. So we need a certain value here, that's called t for now, minus the mean, which comes from the null hypothesis, so that is 20, divided by the standard error, which is s over square root n. s, we said our sample standard deviation was 4, so that is 4 divided by the square root of 25, because our sample size is 25. And how do we call that now? We call that, let's call it T high, TH, for the higher, and sometimes we call it confidence level, okay, TH. Now, if you solve this, what you will find is that TH is equal to, sorry, we shouldn't call it T, we should call it Q bar H, Q bar H. Q bar H. Now it's T was up here, now we are talking about Q bar. So it's Q bar H. And if you solve that, you will get a value of 21.37. Right? So this is a simple equation. You can solve that for QH. You get 21.37. And we can also do the same for that negative value here. That will be negative 1.711 is equal to q bar l for low minus 20 divided by 4 over square root 25 and you will find that q bar low is equal to 18.63 so we're here 18.63 that was q bar low and this one here was 21.37. And of course you realize that these values are symmetric around the hypothesized mean of 20. So that means the rejection rule is reject H0 if Q bar is either smaller than 18.63 or T is larger than 21.37. So now we've derived all our three decision rules. In practice, you only need one, but I want to demonstrate all three here. So um, we can do that all without me telling you 
what actually the sample mean was. Okay, all of that you can get without the sample mean. In fact, the first two decision rules you could have written down without also the sample standard deviation. To derive the third rule, we needed the sample standard deviation. So let me now tell you what the mean is in the sample. Okay, 18.5. So now we can use that to decide whether we should reject or not reject the null hypothesis. Let's start with the third decision rule. Remember, to the right of this line we reject H0 or to the left of this line we reject. So where is 18.5 in this case? Um, use gray for this. So 18.5 is somewhere here. Okay, I haven't left myself much space so that is 18.5 this line here so we immediately see this is in the rejection region so we can now state reject H naught and we decided that we can now decide that on the basis of this but let's see and just confirm that we get the same decision if we use that second decision rule for that we need to calculate the T statistic here so let's do that uh, here. So we're having t is equal to, now we take our sample mean, 18.5 minus 20 divided by the standard error of our test statistic, which is 4 divided by square root of 25. And when you calculate that, what you get is a t statistic of negative 1.875 so 1.8 negative 1.875 is somewhere here okay so that value here is negative 1.875 that is also in the rejection region with reference to the t value. So again, with this decision rule, we will also say reject H0 because negative 1.875 is smaller than negative 1.711. So second decision rule also gave us the same answer. What about the first decision rule here using the p-value? Well, for that, we need to calculate the p-value. So, what is the p-value here? What is the p-value? So, negative 1.875. With this, we need to go back to the t-table. So, here's our t-table. And remember, what we, so what we had here is negative, our test statistic, 1.8. 75. That was our test statistic. So what we what we now need is basically the probability that this test statistic cuts off in the left hand tail and because we are having a two tailed test statistic add the probability that 1 plus 1.875 cuts off on the right hand side. Okay, that is now what we are interested in. This great area is the p value of the test, and we're looking in both tails because we are having a two tail test statistic. So, how can we read this probability from the table? Let me just show a just the right hand tail of this distribution in a bit more detail okay so here's our right hand tail so what we have here is just this bit of the test statistic so what we read from the table is that 1.711 that was the value that cut off 95 percent to the left so 1.711 
that cut off 5%. Okay, so from up to here is 5%. Then the next value in the table, that was actually, so that was the blue value here. Now let's take the green value. Let's look what the next value does. The green value 2.064. 2.064. What probability does this cut off? Well, to the left it's 0 0.975. That means to the right it is 2.5%. Okay, here we have 2.5% or 0 0.025. And now let's come with gray, which is our actual value 1.875. That is somewhere in between here. 1.875. So what we know is that this gray area here has a size between two and a half and five percent. Right? So this gray area, this gray area here is larger than two and a half percent, but smaller than five percent. And that is the information we now have for our p-value. Okay, this is between two and a half and five percent. But remember, we need to basically double this up because we are also looking we're not only looking in the right-hand tail, we are also looking in the left-hand tail. So we basically have to double this up. That means that the p-value for our test is larger than two times two and a half percent so it's larger than five percent and smaller than two times five percent that's ten percent so this is our conclusion here the p-value is between 0 0.05 and 0.10 that's all we can say given the information in the t distribution table you have you go to Excel you can get more precise values but that is enough to make a decision because remember here the decision rule is reject H0 if the p-value is smaller than alpha alpha was 10% and we know that the p-value is smaller than 10% somewhere between 5 and 10 but it is smaller than 10% so according to the first decision rule we will also reject the null hypothesis